Yo, yo, it's a fairy, and there's a topic I've been wanting to cover, but it took me a while to recover, collect enough broadheads in live shooting situations, which if you do not follow my channel, this is not a hunting channel, this is a testing channel, and I've turned our ranch into a de facto test lab to test broadheads and arrow platforms on target, and that target happens to be feral hogs, because they're handy. The topic we're talking about today is um, what your blade edges look like or feel like, or the sharpness level, or the damage incurred after the shot. Because I get a lot of messages from people to say, hey, my broadhead looks like X, Y, Z. And I say, well, what happened? But we're gonna cover some of that, what happened, because I have three examples of broadheads that appear to be super dull, or chewed up, or destroyed. But there's a reason why. And once again, no one in the whole industry talks about this stuff, except for moi. Stay tuned. the shots and the broadheads and um oh, this has been since bat last summer that i was smart enough <laughs> to remember to keep those broadheads and not sharpen them up and uh do an analysis of this i get a lot of pictures from people who say hey my broadhead and they're sitting there cutting paper they say well what happened well i shot a deer and went 40 yards and died arrow buried seven inches in the ground but it's not it's not very sharp and i'm like oh well, well. So here's the question. This is Dr. Ed. So Dr. Ed, this thank you for once again contributing and making me look smarter because thanks to you, I have content to study what you studied. Ed always says, we don't care what the broadhead does to the animal. We care what the animals do to the broadheads. And you gotta be thinking about that a bit Everybody thinks about broadhead damage, you know, holes, blood trails, all the cliche industry blabber blabber and marketing stuff that you read about broadheads is all about blood trails and all this, mostly blood trails. And how much, it never, it doesn't get a blood trail. You're going to be gushing. Take your shoes off, close your eyes. You, every time, 100%, going to whack them. Well, that's where I vary from the industry and everyone else on the damned earth. Through all the testing I've done and following Ed's advice and the 12 factors, the easiest thing to do is shoot them lower one third and, and shoot to kill them as fast as possible. Blood trail is secondary. That aside, I have collected three broadheads. This broadhead is a prototype Magnus single bevel 150, which is, uh, it's currently... January of 24, 2024. You're not supposed to say that stuff on video because then it dates the video. I don't give a crap. This broadhead will be out in about a month. And I'm really excited about the buzz cut version. That is not the buzz cut. That's my prototype that I hand chisel, but we're going to have both of those. Okay, but not a buzz cut. It's this head right here. You can see the goose still on it. This is last June. And here's the shot from Zach Farnball. That's about 18 yards, smoked that pig with 50 yards. This is another prototype shot. I did a whole video on this. Card will pop up, link will be in the description. My son Caleb shot a pig and I've actually got kind of a small series I did. I did a review on the broadhead. We shot a pig with the broadhead and then because Caleb's the best shot ever, he shot it right on the point of the shoulder and cut the scapula off and the pig died. But the arrow was anchored in the pig's offside humerus and it got chewed up pretty bad. We'll talk about that. And then this is the RF 200. For those of you that have been kind enough to wait, we sold out last year. We're doing a facelift on this. Nonetheless, this broadhead was used in this video where I actually lost one. And as you can see in this shot, 
I have a full analysis of that, why I think I lost him, and it'll be in the link description, card will pop up. This thing is dull as a hammer, and I wanna talk about that. All right, we're gonna start with the ugly one. That thing looks terrible. The blade edges are all chewed up, points in good shape, and the broadhead is straight. I spun it on the shaft, it broke off because it buried, it hit, cut the shoulder blade off and then buried in this side in the humerus, and the pig went about 50 yards so what happens is, I want to use a square here because it's got a nice, nice notch in it. What happens is when it goes into, let's say you shoot a quartering away shot, right? And it anchors up in here and they run with it. Or you shoot across them and it, or, and it anchors in them or you shoot them this direction and it anchors. If they're running with the shaft, the broadhead is subject to lateral forces on the broadhead and it's actually being treated like that when it's, they're running along. So like Ed said, we want to know what the um, animals do to the broadheads, right? What he meant by that was in a normal hit, when it passes through or sticks out the other side or doesn't, you know, when you pull the broadhead out, you look at it and say, what the heck happened to the broadhead? Because that's what the animals did to the broadhead. In this case, no broadhead on earth is this fair. This is not a brand specific thing. If you shoot one in the vital V and they roll or they spin away and it gets up into the bone, they're running and essentially their shoulder is going round and round and round and the broadhead's in there and it's getting ground up and chewing on the blades. If you've ever tried to use your buck knife as a pry bar, <laughs> here's to you. It's basically the same thing. So you, what I mean by that is you cannot decide that the broadhead blade is no good, any brand of broadhead, if it anchors in the bone and they run with it. It's easy to tell if it anchored in the bone. You've got to gut the thing and clean it. While you're taking it apart, look. That's the best information you can get is if your broadhead looks terrible, you pull it out or whatever, and go, wow, don't say that, that thing's a piece of crap. That's the normal response. And it's completely illiterate to think that. Look in and see what it was stuck in. Now, if it's just a rib hit, let's say it hits and pokes out both sides and they run and break it off and the broad head's trashed, you need to be concerned. Very concerned if it looks bad. It skips off the ground. We're about to talk about that. If you shoot through one, this is the one that, kind of throws people for a loop is when you shoot through one and maybe the tips chewed off or blunted, you don't know. Most people get real excited, right? We're excited because we're hunting. You'll shoot through one, you pull your arrow out of the ground and go, God, that thing looks like hell. You don't think maybe there's rocks or sand or a really hard to stick or it skipped. <laughs> Again, not fair to any broadhead platform. When you shoot through them, you don't know what the animal did. You do know in this case, right? But you don't know what it did through the lethal parts. You just know that it hit the bone and destroyed the broadhead. This is that one from Zach. Again, here's the clip. Complete pass through. Got that one. Zipped right through, right? We found that pig in no time. And, and it's dull as a hammer. Now, we um, sharpen these things before we went out, but you can barely, barely cut paper with it, right? And that's an interesting thing. So with single bevel broadhead, see how bad that side is? And see how this side kind of does okay? But it's chippy, like it's hanging up. It's because it's dinged up. And that's from skipping off the ground, I'm pretty sure. Again, there's no way to confirm this. I'm gonna do some more testing this year with a target behind it. The only fair thing to do is to use something like a target that's pretty consistent and softer, not likely to damage the blades, and then just shoot through stuff and see what the animals do to the, to the broadheads on a normal hit, bone aside. That one skipped on the ground. Single bevel broadheads, it's very common. This one's probably the same, we'll check it in a minute. It's very common for one blade to be much more dull than the other, even when they skip 20 yards. I hadn't figured that one out yet. 
And some of the broadheads I've picked up where I've shot from an elevated position and they just bury in the dirt. Um, one edge will be like flat, like, I mean, dull, like you gotta sharpen the hell out of it. And the other is not, but it's this far in the dirt. So I don't know, I wish I did more videos and more stuff to ponder about. And then as noted, this is the Ranch Ferry 200 from 2023. It's getting a facelift for 24. Not gonna be a whole lot of changes better steel a different kind of steel and stuff but anyway this one is this shot again and as you can see it skips pretty good i mean it act like that pig wasn't even there and you can see it i'm also kind of run off like a snake but it is i mean dull as a hammer and i promise you the old ranch fairy gets out the precision adjust the strop and all that stuff. I don't go out in the field anymore without sharpening my own broadheads. So if you pick this thing up, you sharpen it to a razor finish and got it where it would shave hair, you know, cut paper real clean, stropped it out and everything and followed the ranch fairy advice because sharpen, sharpening broadheads is the single most overlooked thing next to Aeroflight in the industry. And probably the number one overlooked thing. Everybody says, well, a bottom that says hunting sharp. There's one single bevel company that sharpens broadheads for you for an extra charge and <laughs> I can lick the edges when they ship them to you. It's terrible. That, that aside, this broadhead skipped. Again, I'll show you real fast and watch it skip behind the pig. And it actually kind of snakes a little bit. So we don't know what the pig did to the, to the broadhead. We just know I'm not a good shot and that pig got away, but we, and we know it skipped on the ground. So be careful when you're um, looking at your broadheads after you shoot stuff. I don't care what brand you're shooting. I don't care if they're freaking flappers, <sighs> but whatever. Um, don't just go to blaming, you know, Mike and Magnus or whoever's making the broadhead you shoot when your arrow buries in the dirt, skips on the ground. Like the ranch is real sandy and um, not a lot of rocks. So it's just horrible. It's like shooting across sandpaper. And it's super common for them to come back, start it out razor sharp, and they are absolutely dull as a hammer. We don't know what the animal did to the broadhead. We know that it went through the animal and skipped on the ground or buried in the dirt. So your analysis of the broadhead damage, especially in the one that anchors in a bone, okay, you don't know. You don't know. So as I, as I said, I'm, I'm planning to um, get a couple of test pigs this year and put a target like three feet behind it. So it'll, if, we, if it passes through, it'll clear the, the whole pig and just shoot them in the ribs and then do like best testing or something pre and post just to see what, what happens and look at the edges and stuff. It's something I've been wanting to look at, but it took me a while to collect um, you know, three broadheads and set them aside so I could do this video. All right, that's that's my talk for today. I hope you'll take this information, just kind of noodle it around in your head. And again, I said, no, I don't care what brand you're shooting. Um, the only thing time I would be concerned is if you get one where like it's fletching out one side and shaft out the other for whatever reason. And that broadhead looks like heck, super dull, and the blades are chewed up, that's when you need to be concerned that the animal damaged your broadhead. What the animal did to the broadhead as opposed to what the broadhead did to the animal. The, the, the thing may have gone 50 yards, it's fine. But what, what you gotta be concerned about is if that happens a lot, you shoot a lot of deer or whatever and you keep getting rib hits and you collect two or three that you know didn't hit the dirt or whatever, didn't hit a bone, and they keep getting chewed up, it's gonna cost you one one of these days. Or the track's gonna be longer. Broadheads that are dulled or chewed or chipped up are not as efficient as broadheads with steel quality that can take on impact, cut through mud, hair, dirt, all that stuff, and the vital organs. This is my, I say this is my final thought, but <sighs> tension deficit disorder. <laughs> you need to be thinking about how high a quality of broadhead you're shooting and will it survive impact? 
just at the end of the day, the last thing that happens bow hunting after you've gotten your camouflage underwear and the most expensive sights on the earth and you got the coolest bow on earth, that's all great. The last thing that happens is the broadhead hitting the animal. And you need to reframe your, your mental concept that it has to survive impact, the impact side of the animal and still be sharp. Then you're gonna be lethal. If it's dulling on impact, which we don't know, so. Oh, great. <laughs> now I need to cut the rib cage off of pigs or one side off of them and only shoot through the impact side. So I'll write that on my list of things to do because that would actually be a more fair test. Who cares about the exit side? Troy, only test the impact side. Mm, shoulder blades, humorous. Man, there's all kind of fun there. Okay, I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Follow me on Instagram. Surprisingly, I'm the Ranch Fairy on Instagram, which is crazy. I post a lot of short clips and pictures, mostly pictures of other people. My goal of this channel is to make the people who listen to me extremely lethal and happy when they're hunting and acquire their game in a very, very efficient uh, manner. I know that's Dr. Ed's passion, and that's why he did the study, was to try to find the most lethal arrow platform, all hits, all angles, everything. And that's what he's taught me, and well, seems like the goal of bow hunting should be to be lethal, and not to, to get bounce off with the old flipper flapper and a, you know, Twizzler stick. I don't know, we'll see what happens. See ya.